what's okay in a marriage bed what is not okay different positions in sex people say sex toys oral sex all of these things what is biblical what is lawful what is okay this is what we wanted to address we're going to highlight four things that are not okay in a marriage bed first scripture that we would like to read is hebrews chapter 13 verse mm -hmm. 4. marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled but fornicators and adulterers god will judge the greek word translated undefiled is mm -hmm. usually used in this exact form four times in the new testament and it means uncontaminated mm -hmm. or set apart there are many sins but i'm gonna share we're gonna share four mm -hmm. things that are not okay sexual immorality is having sex with someone other than your spouse yeah. and here are those four things mm -hmm. number one is adultery so it's when you are mm -hmm. having sex with somebody else including while married. yes including spouse swapping it's adultery and it's very common in our it's culture becoming common mm -hmm. in our culture Mm -hmm. where people switch spouses or swap spouses yes. temporarily to have better experiences. It's not biblical yeah. and it's an adultery. The second thing that's not okay mm -hmm. in a marriage bed is what threesomes. Is threesomes Three is when threesome. you bring one more person into bed. I actually have uh, seen Christians justify that and say, well, Jacob had Rachel and Leah. Mm -hmm. So he mm -hmm. was married to two women right. and therefore it's okay to uh, bring one more person into uh -huh, bed uh -huh, uh -huh. to practice uh, threesomes. Well, you have to understand is that Jacob did practice polygamy. It's not God's original intent, mm -hmm. but Jacob did not have sex with Rachel and with Leah. At the same time. At the same time. Threesomes is sexual immorality. It is wrong. Even if your spouse agrees mm -hmm. with it, if your spout, spouse agrees with it, they are crazy. <laughs> um, and if you think of that idea, you are also crazy. And if a third person is on board with that, you have three of you that are, are crazy. crazy. <laughs> yeah. The marriage is supposed to be between two people, yes. not a whole neighborhood. Now, the third uh, thing that's not okay in marriage mm -hmm. is mm -hmm is watching porn pornography watching porn with your spouse is a virtual threesome and virtual idolatry adultery adultery mm -hmm. now i have um mentored or prayed for some couples who one spouse came and said we want to introduce marriage into our marriage pornography so where usually it's a husband mm -hmm. who um, forces a wife to watch pornography and then to, then to reenact that mm -hmm. in their marriage bed it's wrong it's a sin and it's an open yes. door to demons and so watching porn to spice up your uh, marriage bed is you're inviting demons into your marriage bed you're you're inviting fantasies it's not real mm -hmm. um and we have i have an interview with an ex porn star yeah. you can watch it and this is not this is not how real sex is it, it's a perf these are called performers these are not spouses okay and so and it takes you know days uh, to make a 40 minute yeah. video and there's a lot of editing that's it's involved there it's it, it's it's not, it's not how real. marriage yeah. is it's made it's made for entertainment godless entertainment but it's not meant to be an example mm -hmm. and so and if you take that as an example for your marriage you just, it's pretty much a sure way to destroy your marriage it's literally trying to fix a porn problem by reenacting pornography mm -hmm. in marriage bed it's mm -hmm. wrong the third yeah. the fourth, fourth one. wrong mm -hmm. thing in a marriage bed is rape mm -hmm. all non-consensual sex consensual consensual sex is rape whether in marriage or not and I mentioned First mm -hmm. Corinthians chapter seven verses one through five deals with giving satisfaction in sex, mm -hmm. not demanding it or forcing a spouse yes. to have sex with you. The Bible does not give that permission to mm -hmm. demand sex. Yeah. Now, when it comes to things like different positions in sex, people say sex toys, oral sex, all of these things. What is biblical? what is lawful what is okay this is what we wanted to address we want to pretty much give you three questions to ask before if it's not yeah. adultery mm -hmm. if it's not adultery 
if it's not bringing another person or bringing a pornography mm -hmm. or it's not rape where you're forcing somebody yeah. what about some other sexual expressions in bed and so we want to ask you to ask three questions if you're thinking well should we can we three questions to ask question number one is it prohibited in the scripture mm -hmm. if it's not assume it's permitted if it's not prohibited in the mm -hmm. scripture and it's between you and your spouse mm -hmm. um, you can assume in a married bed it is permitted mm -hmm. so if it's not adultery if you're not bringing some sexual fantasies um, into a marriage bed if you're not forcing your spouse and if you're not bringing somebody else you can assume it's pretty much permitted first Corinthians mm -hmm. chapter 6 verse 12 it says all things are lawful for me but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all. But I will not be brought under the power of any. So Paul is pretty much saying that, okay, mm -hmm. things are lawful for yeah. me. Is it lawful? Mm -hmm. So that's what the first question we ask. Yeah, yeah, is yeah. the Bible mm -hmm. against it? Is the Bible very clearly against it? Mm -hmm. If the Bible is not in the area of marital sexual intimacy, mm -hmm. we have freedom. Now the second question we want to ask and that is this is this beneficial mm -hmm. does it harm or hinder sexual uh, closeness between two spouses mm -hmm. so yeah. does this act does this uh, particular behavior mm -hmm. will it bring us closer mm -hmm. or will it actually pull us further away that's a good one and yeah. that's what paul says first corinthians chapter 6 verse 12 yeah. he says all things are lawful but he says not all things are helpful. helpful yes so okay what does the bible say is the bible clearly against it if not we are within our christian freedom mm -hmm. but then we have to ask another question not just are we free to do it but should we do it mm -hmm. based on this based on this mm -hmm. is this gonna help our intimacy or harm our intimacy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and usually one spouse suggests maybe something and the other one will say you know what I don't feel comfortable I feel da 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 da, yeah. da and stuff so and then what what that begins to happen mm -hmm. is that then this helps you to know if this yeah. is helping yeah and hindering. and if one spouse may say oh it's gonna help me in our intimacy and another spouse will say oh it's not gonna help me for sure that means it's not going to be helpful for the marriage for the marriage itself and this mm -hmm. is where we are shooting at for yeah. both people to come closer not just for one person to feel like oh yeah it's going to help me and then third one and that's the biggest one mm -hmm. and is there a mutual consent, consent? Mm -hmm. so what does the bible say is it lawful is it beneficial and thirdly is there a mutual consent is the spouse being forced coerced into what he or she is not comfortable with mm -hmm. or manipulated to <laughs> or manipulated into yeah first corinthians chapter mm -hmm. 7 verse 5. do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves uh, to fasting and prayer and come together again so that satan does not tempt you because you lack self-control yeah so we see pretty much here that the bible says that there needs to be consent yeah even to withdraw sexually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there must be consent mm -hmm. and so that means that god wants us to have a mutual consent god wants us to have yes is it scriptural mm -hmm. is it beneficial and is there mutual consent mm -hmm.